Okay, let's get started. Uh, my name is Christian Clark. I'm the Utah Main Street Program Coordinator, and this is the Utah Main Street webinar series. For this, the webinar today, we have uh, Professor Stacy Harwood, University of Utah City and Metropolitan Planning Department Chair. The topic of this webinar, I'm just going to read what we have here. Meet with Professor Stacy Harwood, University of Utah City and Metropolitan Planning Department Chair. This interactive session will explore collaboration opportunities between Main Street community, communities, planning students, and faculty. Okay, um, and with that, I'll turn the time over to Professor Harwood and I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay. Professor Thank you, Thank you Christian. Um, nice to meet everyone virtually. Before I start, um, if you don't mind, if you could put in um, the chat, like which, where you work, your department, just where it's located, what city, so I can have a sense of who you all are, that would be helpful. Um, thank you. Okay, don't be shy about the chat. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get my slides set up. Great. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, keep putting stuff in the chat while I get going here. Um, so really today is about um, introducing you to our department um, at the University of Utah and just letting you know a little bit about us and how um, you might engage with us. Uh, we do a lot of work with lots of communities, particularly um, in Utah, um, Salt Lake, and then also all communities in rural areas, suburban areas. Um, and so I'm going to go over the different ways that you might want to engage with us. Um, okay, so uh, city and metropolitan planning department. So I've been the department chair for about five years. Um, this is, I'm in my fifth year now. Um, before that, I was at the University of Illinois. I was a faculty member there. So I'm, new, I'm fairly new to Utah, but I'm having a great time. Um, so the department is a lively group of faculty um, and we have a, a vision, which is we envision a world in which planning engages with neighborhoods, cities, and regions to achieve ecological resilience, smart growth, and social justice. So that guides everything that we do, um, how we teach, um, you know, the kinds of people we recruit to the program, um, the students, projects, and so on. And so you can see our, our faculty around there. We have a great team. Let's see. All right, I wanna just share a little bit about our goals. Um, let me get some of these things off my screen, okay. So, you know, obviously to train students to conduct research, engage professionals with the aim of advancing ecological resilience, smart growth, social justice through effective forward-looking planning to promote an enriching, respectful department where students, faculty, and staff can learn and work in an inclusive, supportive, and dynamic environment, and to raise the profile of the department's scholarly research, teaching, and community professional engagement within the university and beyond. So the last one is really um, what I'm here to talk about today is the way that we can increase our engagement with you in ways that you can connect with us. So I wanna first start just to tell you a little bit about our students. Um, this is just a slide I, I've used um, for other presentations. We have a really diverse student body. Um, we're about half, you know, half male, female, 63% um, white, 11% Hispanic, 30% first generation college students, and 17% of students come from outside the U.S., and then 50%, 56% of our students are from Utah. So we have a really dynamic, exciting group of students from all over, both from Utah and, and outside Utah. That's something we're really proud of. And then just a teeny tiny bit about what we do in terms of our programs. Um, so we have an undergraduate program in urban ecology. It's a very interdisciplinary, hands-on program. We have a, our primary program obviously is in Utah, but we do have a program in Korea. It's 
the campus is called the Utah Asia Campus, and the university has a number of programs there. So students study in Korea for our program three years, and then they come and study for one year here, and then they get the University of Utah degree. So that's kind of a new thing. I a lot of people don't know about that. Um, so that's pretty exciting for us. We we love having that program, and we have two faculty there who teach and run the urban ecology program in, in Songdo, Korea. And um, we have some, a couple of minor programs for our undergrads. We have the urban ecology minor, and then we have the dark sky studies minor, which is brand new. Uh, it's been running about, let's say three years now. It's really popular and it's open to anyone on campus, any major, um, and it's to learn about how to protect the dark skies with a heavy focus on Utah. Um, then our undergrads, if they're our top undergrads can apply to what we call the four plus one, which is a way to get your master's degree in one additional year. So that's the four plus one. We have a master's of city and metropolitan planning, and that's our accredited program. Our, it's an accredited professional program. Um, and then we have a bunch of dual degrees. So with the master's, you can do a JD or you can do a master's in planning with uh, real estate, a master's in planning with public policy, and a master's in planning with public administration. And all those are pretty popular. Um, we really love the, the, the MCMP, MPA. We think of that as like, if you wanna work in small towns, that's like the great, the best combination because you learn pretty much everything you need to do. You have to do a lot of different things when you're in a small town. So we love that, that combo. Um, you learn about running cities and planning all together. And we have a number of graduate programs, um, urban planning, urban design, and community engaged practices. And those are a bit kind of add-ons to the graduate programs. And then we have a, PhD, a small PhD program. Um, so that's what we do. We have about well, a little over 200 students. Okay. So this is probably um, the most important thing for you all is to know what we specialize in. And this is primarily in our graduate programs, but this is kind of the areas that we tend to work on, work in with other, like outside the uh, department. So ecological planning, economic and real estate development, housing community development, small and resort town planning, smart growth, which includes land use, transportation, and accessibility, and urban design. So our students tend to come to us because these are the things that we do well. Not that we don't do other things well, but this is kind of the area where we put, we invest a lot of our energy. Um, we have a lot of elective courses in these areas, and this is where often the students will work on projects that are out in the community that can fit into one of these areas. Um, before I move on, I wanted to just make sure that if there, see if there are any questions or anything. Anyone? Okay. Feel free to interrupt because uh, really most of this will be a conversation. Yeah. We do have one question from uh, Paul Larson, Brigham City in the Q&A. Oh, okay. uh, he said, I've wondered if we can partner with you with our universities to get interns who could help us with metrics, establishing baselines, et cetera, for our main street districts. This is important to us to be able to measure impacts over time. Yeah, that's something that I'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, interns are great. Um, and I, I can talk about how to to kind of get, get that process going with us in a second. So, I believe, yeah. and I believe that our main street intern and SHPO intern Faith Bits is in the urban ecology program currently. Oh, great. Yeah, super. And our students can get credit for doing internships as well. So it helps them finish their degree. Um, they can apply for elective credit when they do internships. There's one more question here that relates um, to where we're at now uh, from Elizabeth. <laughs> Gerard, she said, do you anticipate having a historic preservation certificate or program? Yeah, I've had that question asked a number of times. So the, the historic preservation certificate is in the architect, the School of Architecture. And so we, we don't administer that certificate program. And as far as I know, um, they, that certificate program's on hold because they lost one of their primary faculty who helped run that certificate program. Um, it's definitely on my list to at least get some, at least a course, you know, back on the, on our inner curriculum, because we do have students who are interested in historic preservation. Um, I would love if you want to follow up with me and 
mainly I, I'm looking for an instructor <laughs> to do an intro historic preservation class. So that's something that we could do. I don't know about the certificate because the certificate takes a bit more to run and you need a faculty member who really um, has that expertise, but we could do like an elective course to at least get students aware of historic preservation and sort of the nuts and bolts of it. So if that's something you're interested in, or you know someone who might make a good instructor for that, um, definitely reach out. Thanks for the question. Okay, um, let's see. Move ahead here. So yeah, so engage with us. So this is what I really wanted to spend some time on. Um, there's just a lot of different ways that you can collaborate and connect with us. Um, things that are really simple to things that are much more complex. Um, a lot of times people, you know, engaging with us is a relationship. And so sometimes uh, it takes a little bit of time to get it going. And then once it gets going, it's it's really great for, for everyone involved. So we have some simple things that you can do just to get to know us. Um, and that way you get to know the students and the faculty is simply, for example, being a, a project reviewer. So at the end of the year, we have a big um, end of the year uh, kind of review for our master students and we invite practitioners to review the students work. It's super fun and it's easy um, and, and you get food at the end of it. So, <laughs> you know, that sometimes I tell someone, if you just want to get to know us, that's a really low risk thing. You show up um, and it ends up being really fun because you run into people, you know, and um, you get to see what the students are doing. So that's one really super easy way to just get to know us. If you're one of our alumni, um, tell us your story. Um, we love to profile our students or alumni on our webpage. Um, so that's another simple way just to kind of get this, the ball rolling. Um, we have other things that we do right now. Actually, this week, we're doing this kind of informal mentoring um, activity where I have professionals doing resume reviews and mock interviews um, with our master students. And then we have a career fair that's coming up. And so February and March, those are another way. It's like if you're if you're um, if you have a job and it's around the March time, you know, you can come to our career fair and like pitch the job to students. And it's a great way to kind of do some informal interviewing as well. Um, the resume review and mock interviews are great because you get to meet our students. And then sometimes it ends up you click. And um, I've had a couple of cases where they ended up hiring the student. That wasn't the intention, but they just the student had the right skill set and they were looking for an intern. So th those are some simple things. Also, just guest lecturing. Like if you have a really cool project and you're like, I would love to share this, you know, I can connect you with faculty who are always looking for guest lectures um, on projects, particularly in Utah. So those are like the simple, simple things, low risk, not a lot of time. Um, and it's, those are easy things. Um, and I always recommend that as a way to start uh, just because you get to know us a little bit. Um, more complicated things are hiring our students for internships. This is something that I I help, but I don't do the work for you. So what I do often is someone will say, I really want to hire one of your students or we're looking for a student who can do this and I'll say okay write up a short description you know have a deadline have a process I can help you connect with the students so we um we have a listserv that we send out jobs on internships we also post things on LinkedIn for our students we have a little networking board um so I can get the word out for you but I won't pick the student for you because that's too too complicated and if it doesn't go well then I, I feel responsible but I can definitely help connect you with our students they're always looking for internships um so and we've been doing the listserv for a while so students kind of know that we post jobs there and they check their their email for internships and then we also with internships if it's like a very specialized area we'll target like classes that have that topic so say um say you're interested in something related to dark skies you know i would then email the instructors teaching those classes saying do you know any students who might be interested so i kind of help with the, the you know the matchmaking but i don't make any decisions that's all up to you i will say that students prefer to be hired <laughs> than to volunteer um but sometimes you don't have money and i, I get that but students definitely prefer to be paid for internships and then um, a lot of them will get credit for for the internship and you don't really have to do much on that end you just have to sign a form saying yes you know i'm hiring this student and then at the end the student will ask you to do an evaluation so that's internships um and both our undergrad and graduate students are always looking so they can do internships any time of the year summer is really popular but students work 
work all the time. A lot of our students work. Um, okay, so some more complicated kind of things that you can do. Um, all of our master's students do a professional project. Um, and so that professional project is about a year long process and they do it in their second year. And what I'm in the process of gathering right now is project ideas. And then we organize um, uh, like a pitch meeting. It's a virtual pitch meeting and you'll just pitch your project and, and you'll we'll have breakout rooms and students can ask you questions. And if the master student ends up picking up the project, um, you get a really great deliverable from them. Um, and I'll, I'll go over some examples of projects in, in a second. But that's something if you have and the best kind of projects are projects that you don't need today, like something that's a little bit down the line. Um, students are great at doing things like plans and um, best practices or case studies or a lot of data gathering, mapping, community engagement. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot of variety of things they do. But that's if you have a, a project idea, you can um, you can reach out to me and I will work with you to. Uh, connect with the students. Now, let's see. Let me pause here. I see a little bit going on in the the chat here. If I mean, if I'm in the street program. Can. Oh, that's not my for me. I don't know if you can, but that sounds great. If you if you can. <laughs> uh, Amber did put that the upcoming career fair is Friday, March seventeenth, and that Jansen and Amber from uh, Shippo will be there. Oh, awesome! That's terrific. Yeah. And once you get on our list for the career fair, um, we just keep coming back to you and, and checking. And, you know, sometimes we don't, you know, you don't have something and that's okay. Um, but it's really great to just go because then you can, you just meet the students. And when you do have something, you've kind of already been um, doing a little recruiting. I'm glad that you're going. That's terrific. Okay. Um, so, I'll, whoops. I will go, I can talk more about the professional project, but that's probably like one of the, like if you really want a very intense experience, it's a year long process. Usually students start working on the projects often in the summer, but we get them lined up um, in the spring. Now I can't, I can never promise anything, but we just create the opportunity for partnering. Um, last year we had more projects than students. We had about 54 project ideas. Um, and we didn't, we don't have that many students, but a lot of them got picked up by students. It's sometimes one organization will have like five ideas, like, hey, we have five uh, project ideas. And then one of them, they'll say, but we can only really work with one student. And so you kind of have to set up some limits, like we're only interested in one student, but we have five possible things they could work on. Um, so that's something if you, if you think you want to do that, all you do is send me an email, we can talk about it. Um, one of our faculty members is running a transportation academy. Um, I don't know if anyone here has been involved in that um, with Keith Bartholomew, um, but that's another way you can get involved with us related to transportation issues. The idea is to train people in the process of transportation planning, learning about how it works. Um, and that uh, it's open to community members. It's open to people who work in, in local government, but maybe not in transportation. Um, we have students involved in that, and then they pick up small projects over the semester and they and they work on those. That's something that's pretty new. We're in our second year of that. Um, so if you're interested in that at all, I can connect you with Keith Bartholomew. And then um, a lot of the faculty just take on projects for their classes. So it's a often a semester long project. And they will, I'll just give you some examples of projects. Um, they may do like a part of a, a plan for a, a local government. Uh, we have a small and resort town planning class, so they often work with small communities. Um, they've done things like, um, they've actually worked a lot on sort of Main Street related. They've done housing, you know, elements, uh, re revamping of general plans, um, needs assessments. Um, we work at different scales, neighborhood to regional. Um, a lot of times our classes are a good good size so they can do a lot of engagement. So door knocking and you know running various outreach events. It just depends on the instructor in the class. Um, what I do in those cases, if I get emails all the time, like, hey, can you help us do this? 
And what I'll say is, oh, you know, usually I try to get enough information so that I can understand what, what you're asking for. And I'll just send it out to the faculty and say, is anyone looking for a project? Sometimes, you know, the faculty are like, no, I already have something. Uh, but sometimes it's just what they're looking for. And it turns out to be pretty exciting. Um, sometimes I'll know of a student who's looking for something and I can connect you with the student. Again, mostly I, my job is I try to connect you with the possibility, but I can't, we have uh, more requests that, that we can't, we have more requests than people who can do the, those things. Persistent helps, like sometimes it doesn't work the first time and then you try again and we, um, we can make it work. A lot of times with project work, we need a bit of lead time. Um, it, it doesn't typically work well um, if you like right before the semester starts say hey can you work on that usually like say if you want to do something in the fall we're already thinking about what we're going to do in the fall right now so there you need like if you want to work with us there often you need a little lead time um, so things that you need yesterday tend to be harder for us to help with um, whoops okay let me just pause for a second see if any any questions Bring candy. Okay, pro tip. That's good. <laughs> yes, candy helps uh, at the career fair. I have, I, have a, I have a question. So yeah, go for it. So for all these things, uh, I think you've mentioned the best way to get started is to email you. Is that to to for any of these things? If you want to hire hire work on hiring a student for internships or pitching a project or whether that's the semester long project or the or yeah, the yeah project for the master's students um, is e emailing you is the best way. Yeah, and I'll show you some other ways that you can connect with us. I mean, I I, I just put try to put people together. So if I say, oh, I know, you know, you should talk, one of these three faculty members would be good to reach out to. I'll just tell you like, oh, this is something that, you know, try this person or I'll say, oh, I'll send it out to all the faculty and see if anyone's interested. Sometimes we get requests that we're not really equipped to do. And I say, well, actually that would be better in the architecture pro, you know, program and I'll connect you with the architecture folks. So, um, or sometimes like someone wanted us to plan a sidewalk and like, that's not, <laughs> we don't plan sidewalks. Um, you know, that, that, so sometimes things are too narrow, um, too specific. Uh, so I, I try to help, you know, I can help you by saying, well, that that's a really exciting project. Let me see if I can We'll brainstorm a little bit and then I'll send you out or I'll say, okay, why don't you come to this event and you can share it with the students. So I kind of just circulate things a lot. Okay. <laughs> We're competing for interns. That's great. All right. Let me move on because I want to give you some examples of some things here. Um, let's see. So this is just like a little picture, some pictures of things. Um, so uh, st the students go love going to the conferences. So they go to the Utah APA conferences. That's where probably the conference we go to a lot. Um, students go to other conferences as well, but you'll, if you're in planning, um, you'll see our students. This first picture here is from the um, CANAB conference. It was a fun one. We had a great turnout. Um, and they all go to the, the one in Salt, the Metro one in the fall as well. Um, the second picture is from our trans whoops, our transportation academy. Slides keep moving on me. Um, so there's just a little bit of a fun picture there. Um, just applied research. A lot of our faculty do things that have policy implications or like relevance. It's not just research that's abstract. Some of us we do more theoretical work, but um, you know, we'll engage with you. And some of our faculty have been able to work on some grants that both combine have a research element and a practical element to it. Um, and then the students are quite involved in, you know, networking and just socializing and getting to know each other. So that I just put that slide up there because the students also just like having fun and connecting with other professionals. Okay. So here's the, oh, let me stop here and see if there's a question. We have another question, yeah. Uh, oh. From Elizabeth. Yeah. How closely does your department work with the architecture department? Well, we're we're in the same college, so um, we're in the college. Of, I'm in the College of Architecture and Planning, and so in that college is the Department of City and Metropolitan Planning, the School of Architecture, and then um, the Division of Multidisciplinary Design. So, yeah, um, I would say that it varies 
um, we we all know each other. Um, there's some collaboration, like some faculty are doing some research projects together. Um, we have some mix in terms of like elective classes, like we might get architecture students in some of our elective classes. Um, I think that's always something we need to work on. It's hard to say what close means because it varies from person to person. I know a lot of the architecture faculty. Um, I work a lot with the architecture chair. So we collaborate all the time. Um, but I don't, yeah, I think it varies. Maybe if you want to be more specific, I could I could dive into that a little bit more. Um, the students probably collaborate a bit more in the classes. Like there's some interesting competitions um, around um, like land use and housing projects. There's some pretty cool competitions that they get involved in and work together on. Okay, good question. <clears throat> um, okay, professional projects. So this is probably one of the like most exciting ways that you could collaborate with us. And I have some pictures of the reports that our students have put together um, just to give you an idea of different things that they've worked on. Um, and they the students work all over all over the place, um, heavily Utah focused, but students do things outside Utah as well. Um, but you know, housing, transportation, uh, rail, trail, corridor planning, design guidelines for the Jordan River, um, all kinds of things. And because the students work on the project for about a year, you get a really high quality um, product. Um, the students um, really love. I mean, well, maybe at once they're finished, they love it. It's it's probably pretty stressful them for them while they're working on it, but it's a great experience. It's probably the best thing they produce while they're with us. Um, it's kind of brings together all their skill sets, um, and it, and they produce really good work. So yeah, I wanted to show you the slide just to kind of give you a sense of the variety of things that students do. Um, so back to the you had that question about the metrics. Let's see if I find that in the chat. That would be something a student could work on for a professional project. It depends on how involved that is, um, but that could be a professional project. And I would recommend even pitching it. We're, we'll have our pitch meetings after spring break. So spring break's next week. So sometime towards the end of March, early April, we'll do these pitch meetings. And if you wanna see if you can get a student to work on that, um, I would recommend reaching out and we can get you on the schedule for that. So the students do a lot of great work. Sometimes they team up um, in like the Summit um, County Rail Trail Corridor Plan. We had two students working on that. I think the same thing for this housing affordability study. So sometimes the students team up and when they team up, they can do even more, um, more work. Um, but we've been super happy with the, the professional projects. I think here's a question you were looking for there. I put it in oh. the chat, it was in the Q&A. Yeah, yeah. So that that's something that maybe we can explore and think about is if if it's more of a professional project or just internship work. Um, but yeah, that would be that'd be great. Oh, we have yeah the pitch meetings we do last year we did five different ones. Um, so we just whenever people are available, I kind of cluster together a couple different organizations, and so I that that's not a problem. Well. We go into April. Um, and so what we do is we'll have, I'll just tell you how we do the pitch meetings. Usually I have in one pitch meeting, maybe three or four or different organizations. And then we start, it's all on Zoom. Um, and we start, everyone does an introduction, quick little overview of their project idea. And then we do a little Q &A, and A that maybe lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. And then we do the breakout rooms by organization and then the students kind of float around in the breakout rooms and they just ask questions um so it's it's really simple and we record the first half so that if a student can't attend they can watch watch them and then at the end we give the students like follow-up information if you're interested in working on this project reach out to this person um so yeah we'll have a bunch of meetings so if you can't make one you can you can do another one yeah great all right, let's see. And if you're, and so the, let me just say a little bit more about the professional projects. So at the end of the year, we do a big event when I was talking about the review 
So at the end of April, we have a big review of all the projects. The students put up posters and they'll do a five minute talk. And then we have reviewers ask questions and they fill out a form and it's part of our, um, it's part of our accreditation, like assessing the student learning. Um, but you get to see all the projects and it really gives you some great ideas like, oh, they can do this or they can do that. Um, and the students do, uh, honestly, they do really amazing, amazing work. Um, last year, one student did like a really cool dashboard um, for like having, I can't remember if it was housing data and there's so many projects, but they helped develop a dashboard. So they did like, it's a little bit more technical project. So they didn't quite have like the, a report, but they created a dashboard for, uh, it was, I think it was Salt Lake City. Um, another student worked on creating this website platform um, related to multicultural communities. So there's a lot of different kinds of end products. They're not always plans, um, but that's tip, um, often the common thing, but they create a lot of different sort of end products uh, depending on what, what you need. The, the goal is that they produce professional level work and it helps set them up to get jobs when they graduate. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so um, I think this may be my last slide. So if you're not sure right now what you wanna do um, with us, just keep it in the back of your mind and then you can always reach out if you have an idea. You can go to our website. Um, we're kind of rebooting our website, so it, we're missing some things, but go to our website and that way you can find all of our contact information. You can reach out to any faculty member anytime. Um, we're super open. You don't have to go through me. Um, I just, I'm like an easy person to reach out to, but you can always email any faculty member directly like, oh, I want to work on this transportation project. You know, you can reach out to any of the faculty who are working on transportation. Um, we're on social media if you just want to follow us and see what we're doing. Um, we have this Utah Planning Networking and Job Board, so you can jo join it and you can post jobs if you have a job. It's it's open. We just make sure that you have some kind of Utah connection, like you're an alumni or you work in Utah, um, and you can join it and post. Um, and then you can always email me um, anytime. We have all kinds of stuff on the website, you know, information about projects, and we have a newsletter and all kinds of great, great stuff if you just want to sort of scan through it and see, see what's up. Um, I think that's it. Let's see. Yeah, that, that's the last slide. Okay. So now really, um, we can just talk about projects, like if you want to get into like, hey, would this be a good idea? Or how would I start this? Um, we can just do some Q&A. So yeah, feel free. <laughs> Anything? Let's see. Not seeing anything else in the chat yet. Anybody else have some questions? Anybody interested in uh, interns or pitching a project or projects? I'm super, this is Mara Alterman in Fairwood, Utah. I'm super interested in pitching a project. And okay. so what I'm wondering is like, what do you see your students getting the most jazz about? Like um, we've had a little bit of experience with interns and you know, there's obviously a difference between people that are kind of just doing the requirements versus people that are passionate. Mm -hmm. And so what do you see the students really getting excited about? Because I have a lot of ideas, but I would rather engage mm -hmm. someone that just, you know, is really happy to, to do that project. Or, or is that kind of where you weed through all of that when they choose what they would like to get involved in? Yeah, so uh, I would say that, um, the, so I'll just say like the, for me, the best projects are where you're super excited about the project the students are working on and the students are very excited about what they're working on. Um, I'll say that what doesn't work for the students is that you're not interested in helping them. <laughs> you know, like, hey, we need this done. And then, then you don't answer any emails, you're not available. Um, that doesn't happen a lot, but occasionally, like every year there's one or two where they're like, they're not answering any of my emails. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, but you need to graduate. So keep moving ahead. So that's, so I think that ideal is you're really motivated about what the student's doing and they're excited about what they're doing. That to me, so topically, you, I think you have to figure out what you're most 
excited about in terms of things that you would want help with. So I usually like to think about the best kind of projects are ones where you're like, if we had another staff person, this would be so great for them to work on. So it's something that you really want, but you don't have the capacity to do. Those are the kind of projects that the students are great at because you're getting something that you really want and they're getting a great experience of learning something that they're interested in. Um, so rather than like, they don't want busy work, they wanna do something that's meaningful and valuable to your organization. Um, but it's something that you're not able to do given your own resources. Um, that that would be how I would characterize it. A lot of our students, um, like they'll start with an internship. They're not really sure if they want to work on the project with that group. And then after they have an intern, they get to know people and then they get really excited. So internships are a great way to start. And a lot of our students will get an internship in the summer and, and they say, I'm going to find something, a project to work on after my internship's over. And they will come back from their internship and say, I started this thing and, I, and, and I'm super excited about it. And they would love for me to continue to, to dig into this. So that's what I'm going to do. So th that's a really common path for our students um, is finding the project through an internship. Because the internship is great because you get to know, like the student gets to know the organization intimately. You know, they get to know, they have like relationships. They get to know the players and some of the politics and they know what materials are available. Those are the ones that we love because there's already that connection. It's a little harder. Sometimes it's a little harder to kind of, someone just kind of drops in and say, oh, yeah, I'll work on that project. Um, but we have a lot of those as well. The students are super excited about the topic and they, they run with it. Um, students are interested in a lot of different things, um, transportation, anything related to the environment, affordable housing, um, I mean, just, you know, disaster, you know, resiliency, um, all kinds of things. Um, the main thing is they want to do, they don't want busy work. They want to do something that's like a value. And so I'll just give you an example. Once like one organization said, we, we need to figure out what to do about drones. <laughs> They're like, we're going to need a policy related to drones because drones are more and more people are going to be using them. And so a student just took on this exploratory project of like looking at how other municipalities are handling drones. Um, and it was kind of an, it was really interesting. It was more future oriented, um, you know, so it's just depends on what you need. And then I can kind of help figure out, uh, if, you know, if how to make it work for us. Uh, another student did park, uh, what is it? Dog park planning for their, for a community that needed a new dog park. And they did an extensive outreach. They did like site assessment. They figured out standards um, and they created a, a, a dog park plan for a community. I mean, there are so many possible possible things. Uh, it just depends on what you need. And then we try to, you know, create the opportunity for you to find a student. Walkability is a big one, urban design. Um, yeah, there's, it's like, there's so many, I can't even think of them all. <laughs> So, but, um, no, that's really helpful. Um, okay. and this is a really nuts and bolts question. Um, so as far as like we're in the middle of planning budget and things like that, and mm -hmm. I do appreciate you saying, of course, the students would like to be paid. Um, <laughs> what would be a, what would a, a pr appropriate budget for an intern be? That's so tricky. Um, I'll just say that I think that must. Yeah, let's let me think here. So I'll just tell you what we pay students. Um, and then you can kind of go from there. So like, we hire lots of students to do hourly work and teaching assistants. So I would say our lowest paid hourly student is $15 an hour. Um, that's usually at the undergrad level. And then the graduate level, we get up into like the 22, 25 range. And then the PhDs are higher. Um, so, you know, it kind of depends on your budget, you know, and a lot of students, We'll work two jobs in the summer. If, you know, they'll have an intern, two internships, or they'll work full time. But yeah, uh, so that's a range. Like I would say, between fifteen and twenty-five. The more experience the student has, the more they're going to want, and they're going to be more competitive. Like they're going to have other offers. So that's a, that's the other thing to think about. Now, some students don't have job experience, and so they might be willing to do like a couple months for free. Um, because they just want to get the work experience and then they can get credit. So it's like that helps 
if they want to get credit, then that kind of helps them a little bit. Um, but most of the students find paid work, I'll be honest. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if that's, that's helpful. No, and that was really helpful. Okay. Thank you. And they work anywhere from like a 10 hour a week job for six months to a full time in the summer. Um, you know, so you can you can gauge it like some students do an internship for a whole year, you know, some like it can be three months, six months, a year, however you want to do it. Um, you can start um, with like a three month thing and say, OK, let's see how it goes. And then if it goes well, we can extend it or you can, like, you know, that there are a lot of a lot of different options. Um, and just do what makes sense for for your organization. And I think that helps answer uh, Melinda's question. Also, she she asked, "Do you have an idea of what kind of pay is average for an intern?" It sounds like fifteen an hour is average for the for undergrad interns. Yeah, and, um, and it goes and up. What about there. amount? Like, do the do, is it, yeah, it can go up from there. But what about like hours? Is that like you said, ten hours a week is common? It could, it, but is that kind of an average, like a ten hour? I know that with I think with faith. And our intern, I think it's uh, t 10 hours a week. So yeah, it depends on like if the student is a, is working, if they're a student full time, you know, they're going to be limited on how many hours they can work. But usually our students do 10 to 20 hours during the school year. And then during the summer or during breaks, they go up to full time if you want them to. So it, yeah, it just depends. But 10 hours is pretty common. Um, but some do have 20 hour a week internships during the school year. But they love a full time internship in the summer and you can get so much out of them if you if you really take them on for three months full time in the summer. Um, they get you can get them to do a lot. <laughs> yeah, 10 hours is tricky. You know, you're only you can only do so much with 10 hours a week. Um, yeah, no, no uh, you have another question in the Q&A. Um, anonymous participant asks, what can we do to increase the likelihood of being selected for project pitches? Um, when, when there's more projects than students? It's hard to know because focus. Okay, so I'll just say a project that has like a clear focus, some, you know, like we, we're interested in this, we're gonna provide you with these resources. Um, we can hire you in the summer to get going. Um, you know, like something that's kind of put together. The projects that are a little bit looser, tend to be harder to match because the student's not clear what you want. Um, but I'm happy, like what I do is I usually review like a project description and I will ask you like, this is a little vague, you know, can you be more clear? Um, I can talk to you, you know, over Zoom or on the phone if, if you need help with it. So I try to help you get to the point where it makes sense as a project. I have a pretty good eye. Like I can tell when I look at something like that, no one's gonna do that because it's like, it, it asks for everything, you know, so, and I kind of have a sense of what students can do and, you know, for a project. So I'm happy to, if you have some ideas and uh, set up a meeting with me or email me something, um, get paying students as, as a good often helps even in the summer, like we have an intern internship for this project, and then you can take it and run with it, um, for your project that, that often helps. It's really hard to, I mean, it's hard to know because students have different motivations. Like some people are, don't want to leave Salt Lake for the summer. Some people want to, like, are willing to move somewhere. Um, you know, if you're not near Salt Lake, if you're out, you know, a couple hours out, um, you know, some students would be willing to go live in another community if it's a paid internship. It's hard to get them to move if it's not being paid, they can't afford to do that. Um, so yeah, there's lots of factors. I'm happy to, to dive into that with anyone. Not seeing any new questions. Are there any more questions before we start to conclude? So I'll, I'll put my email again in the chat. And then also, I'll drop the PowerPoint in there again. Some people came in a little bit late and they didn't see that. Um, but yeah, just email me. I'm happy to to talk with you. Um, and you know, again, it it can't be something that you need right away. Where our time we move a little slower. Um, but if we can make a good fit, it's it's really worth it. Um, the students do produce really great work and. Um, 
I've heard really positive things um, from employers about our students. They're really happy with them. So I, we right now we're we're just in this great space of great students, great faculty, everything. Yeah, we're just producing some really great motivated students. So we'd love to connect with you. And I will say that our our intern Faith has been amazing, and she's in this uh, in the urban ecology program. So we can agree to, or we can uh, attest to that. <laughs> well, they work for dedicated. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, we can work with other alumni. <laughs> We have students who come, like in our grad program, we have students who come from BYU, Utah State, um, you know, lots of different places. And they and they do great with us. <laughs> okay, well, if there, if there aren't any more questions, you can uh, ask one more time if there's anything else. Um, if not, I'm going to send out a, an email immediately following uh, this webinar that has um various links and resources that Stacy shared during her presentation um and uh if they're still not seeing any more questions so I think that's it Stacy um thank you so much Professor Harwood we really appreciate this this webinar I think we answered a lot of great questions and it looks like there's some amazing resources here and people want to take advantage of those so thank you so much Nice meeting everyone. And I thank you. And I'll stick around for a few minutes if anyone has questions or wants to chat here, here too. So I have a question just else. it doesn't even be part of the webinar, but uh, is this a big program? Do you have a lot, how, about how many students do you have? Um, we have over 200 um, oh. in the whole department. Um, let's see, our undergrad is probably about 100. Our master's program right now is like 60 to 70. And then our PhD, we have around 20 or so. Um, it goes up and down and some students are part-time, so sometimes it's hard to keep keep track but like 200 a little over 200 yeah okay yeah yeah so not that's pretty big that's big yeah no it we're we'd love to grow more but um we don't have enough faculty um yeah. we're, we're kind of uh, we're maxed out right now so i'll be honest it's oh, it's okay. a great, yeah i mean it's great um we have a lot of great students um and we turn down a lot of applicants um because we just can't can't you were full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a good problem. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. You know, it'd be it, worst problem would be you know that we don't have enough students applying. But we have a lot of students applying. Our, all of our programs are growing. Um, so it's it's a, it's exciting time right now. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think I think we're good. I think that right. we got a few people here. Um, we'll be getting. We're still working on the the last webinar video to get on YouTube. Um. But we'll be getting out uh, a vi the video of this onto YouTube, and I'll send out that so you can have that link too if you would like to share that video with anyone too. So okay, thank you so and much for inviting me. It was nice to yeah. connect with folks virtually, and I'm glad you're happy with Faith. That's that's super to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. She's been great. So, All right, take care. Okay, thank bye -bye. you so much. Have a great day. Bye.